Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today I got a really cool product to show you guys, which is this dual NIC carrier board for the Raspberry Pi CM4. So let's get started. Now I want to thank Seed Studio for sending this over to me. I've actually been waiting for this for months. They've been out of stock for a while and finally they were able to get it to me. So I want to thank them for sending this over to me and letting me do a review on this. This is everything I wanted on a CM4 on a small little footprint and a full router build because the Raspberry Pi is so capable of doing a router job that we just really needed a build for it. And with the CM4 being as small as it is and being able to create carrier boards for it, this was a, the perfect combination. And with everything you see here, it's very well priced. I'm not even kidding. I'm gonna leave all the links down in the description below so you know where you could get yours. But let me start off with talking about the price. Now, if you wanna get just the carrier board itself, it's $45. And if you want to get it included with the four gigabyte, 32 gigabyte EMMC, CM4, it will be 108. Everything he, you see here, including the case, it's 149. So yes, you could buy everything separate and they're gonna hate me for this, but it doesn't make sense on their website for one thing. To get the carrier board, it's 45. Uh, to get the kit with the CM4 and the four gigabytes is 108. To just buy the case, it's $19. So if you add it up and you bought the carrier board and the case separately, uh, it comes out to 127. So I don't know why they're charging 149 for this whole thing when you could just buy these two separately to be cheaper. So yeah, I don't know if they're gonna fix that on the website, but for now, yeah, if you catch that, uh, you'll be able to get this whole thing for $127. Now, obviously you don't have to use the four gigabyte EMMC. Uh, you could use a one gigabyte or a two gigabyte version if you want or if you have that available, but that's what the kit includes. And I do recommend the more RAM if you're planning to do more traffic in your network. Now, let's talk about the board a little bit and see what you get with this carrier board. You get the USB 2 ports, 3.0, then the dual NIC interface. Uh, one side is for LAN, the other side is for WAN. Obviously, you could configure that. Then you have a USB-C for power and on the go. This is also used to program the board. Then a micro HDMI, so you can still act into the board if you want. Moving to this side, you have a four pin fan connector, two CSI, and an input and output ribbon spot. I don't really know what we could use that for yet because I don't see any product for it, but it is there available. And then you have the three pin over here for the boot up process and then another set of pins for the USB. Now, if you get the Wi-Fi version of the board, you do have a little spot that you could plug your antenna in. And that is also useful if you have a case because the case also have a hole for the antenna mount. On the other side, you do have a micro SD card slot. So if you do have a board that does not have the EMMC, you could still use the SD card interface uh, to work this guy. If you get the full kit, it does come preloaded with OpenWRT and I gotta say, OpenWRT is a great operating system for this board. And I will do another review just on the operating system itself because there's so much to cover, but I will show you little tidbits here and there. Now, as far as the case goes, this is a very impressive case. It fits right in. It comes with a little uh, bottom bracket that you would mount the CM4 carrier board to. Then you mount this whole thing in. And the whole top piece is aluminum. It's basically an entire heatsink. Then it directly mounts the CPU of the Raspberry Pi 4 CM4. And it works really well. Uh, again, on each side, there is a little hole that you can stick an antenna in. So if you plan to use this case, you could attach a little tiny antenna to it and then have it protrude out from either side that you want. On the bottoms, there are these slits. And obviously the slits are for heat dissipation, but it also works for uh, sliding in your CSI cable. So if you wanted to run a, a webcam or something like that using the CSI, you can. Now that's it for the main board. Now, like I said earlier, it does come preloaded with an operating system, which is OpenWRT. Okay, so the first time you log in, it will be displayed with this screen. Root, there is no password, so you're gonna have to set one in the future, but you can just hit log in no even sell you like root, it's not a password. Uh, from here, you could actually check out all the settings that you could do. This is the main dashboard that you would see uh, with what active connections you have. I only have one connection connected to this right now. Like I said, it's only for testing purposes. So um, you can see that I have everything connected. You can set up firewalls, uh, even routes. And if you wanted to do um, 
port forwarding and stuff like that, you could do this in here. It's basically a firewall itself. What I like is that you could hit up uh, channel analytics and it, you could see all the Wi-Fi that's bouncing around. Right now it's uh, starting to scan wireless over here. And there you go. You see a bunch of stuff that's uh, popping around, hidden Wi-Fi's. You could do load balancing. There's a lot of things that you could do with this. But one of the things that I want to show you is that you have the ability to run Dockers, which this in itself makes this worth so much more because if you've been following my series on Pi Hosted, you know how much we can do with Dockers and turning this guy into a micro server or mini server with firewall, that's it. Obviously, there are more options that you could choose from here where you could run up services, downloading services and stuff like that, dynamic DNS. You could turn it into a little NAS. So if you do have the EMMC version and you pop in an SD card, you could use the SD card as storage if you want. I don't recommend it, but you can. Uh, playing around with networks, changing guest Wi-Fi's, uh, setting up routes. Um, that's all here. You can even run VPNs, add a little bit more VPNs because these are the two that are default installed into OpenWRT. But if you go into, uh, I think, is it services or system? System, software, here you could actually add more software. So you might be able to install WireGuard, uh, PPTP if you want, I don't know why. Uh, the Cisco AnyConnect, I believe you could also install in here. So you could do a ton of stuff and yeah, like I said, I will be reviewing this entire OpenWRT on a separate video itself because there's so much more you could do with this that I'd rather dedicate a second video for. And that is it, guys. I am actually very impressed on how this operates, how it works with OpenWRT. It's so smooth. Now, one of the main reasons why I would use this over our traditional home router is because the ability to squeeze more application and be able to do more. So ultimately, a $108 router that you see here can be worth $600 because it's it could do so much more than a traditional home router can. Including the fact that you can install Dockers, you just turn this into a mini router server. I will be replacing my main router with this guy and I also will be replacing the CM4 board because I actually have a CM4 board without Wi-Fi and I run a mesh network in my house so I'd rather not run the Wi-Fi off this router. So I will be technically downgrading to a non-Wi-Fi module CM4 for my future builds. Now, if you guys want me to test other operating systems with this guy, leave it down in the comments below. I do want to see what else I could test with this. Now, I know PFSense won't work because that's only for x86, but I think there's a few others out there. Maybe uh, IP Fire, uh, OpenSense. I think those are ARM-based. And there's a few other handful of ARM-based firewall software that I could install into this guy and test those out as well. But for now, I really do like the open WRT. That is it for me, guys. If you have any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.